Okay, hello YouTube. It is I. This will be uh, game nine. Yeah, game nine of. Actually, I don't know how many games I need to do. All of them, but maybe not the finals ones, but probably the finals ones. Anyways, uh, if you're following along, I had have just uh, played my first game of the day, and I beat Mike Frentz um, by around 50 points, 60 points. And after nine rounds, as you can see up there, my record, or after eight rounds, now it's round nine. My record is six and two plus 15. And of course, my next opponent is Jason Lee, none other than Jason Lee. Uh, Jason Lee is the uh, person who really uh, reeled me into competitive tournament Scrabble. I had already been uh, playing at a club and had played a few tournaments, but around in 2010, 2011, Jason Lee really uh, took me under his wing, uh, gave me advice, taught me how to improve, and the rest is history. He's really been, yeah, extremely, um, extremely kind and generous over the years. Uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, this is not a <laughs> speech about how kind and generous Jason is, but rather how fierce of an opponent he is as well. Um, so I knew coming into this game that uh, he wasn't going to let me win. So yeah, in uh, all in all, although I've been higher rated than Jason for a uh, good, good many years now um, in a row, our tournament record still demonstrates the fact that he is indeed my teacher. Uh, and coming into this tournament, our record, uh, our 1v1 record, head-to-head -head record was 22 for me and 29 for him. So very significant advantage in his favor. And uh, yeah, definitely, definitely not the best matchup for me. So uh, let's see what happens. Uh, I think I need to do this. There we go. Here we are. Okay. So um, without further ado, Jason opens with Yin, which probably means he has four decent. To very good tiles left over. Um, so definitely in this position, I want to play a little bit defensively if I can. So the first thing that sprang to mind was to play uh, logic for 22. Uh, it scores decently. Of course, it does keep a W. I don't really want to keep a W, but it's very, very difficult after logic to do anything. Uh, there's no hook to OY. Uh, you can't go above the G, that back. Uh, so it's just very difficult to do much of anything after this play. The issue that I had here is I could not remember whether A logic was a valid word. And if A logic is a valid word, the play of logic loses a lot of logic uh, because it does set up a uh, very prominent, uh, easy spot to score points and hook the word logic and so as a result of that because of that uncertainty I opted against playing logic I actually was leaning towards a logic being a word because a logical is a word but a logic is not a word uh, it's illogic that is a word um, and instead I spent most of my time considering the option of cowling versus the option of hogway and I thought they were pretty close and thought that if I played cowling, the scowling hook was just going to be there forever. Um, so I decided that I would play Cogway, be a little bit more aggressive. Uh, and yeah, keep LI, so keep Jason's last name. Uh, maybe that would bring me good, good fortune. But unfortunately for me, uh, Jason had a very, very good rack here. And had I played Logic, I would have gotten hit for 87, I think. Um, yeah, for 87. Uh, instead, I get hit for 81. So a better result for me because now the board is actually somewhat open. Uh, and he scored a lot less. But Logic still is probably the best play. And I still have to make it. Um, in this position, I missed something else. I have the word aliased. Do this S for 32 points. 
that's probably my best option. It's not ideal, it does block some lanes a little bit and does allow access to this triple as well as this triple still being open. So just giving Jason a lot of scoring options, uh, but it does score 32 for me and it's probably the best play. Instead I played ideal for 26, so a six point sacrifice. It does keep a better leave, but it's probably slightly better to play alias. There's still a lot of life in the board. I don't have to worry too much about constricting things. Uh, so that's another small mistake. Uh, and here, Jason plays FIE, uh, really just taking care of so much at the same time and scoring points. Uh, so a great play for him. I draw a J and an S and an extra A, and the only thing I see to do is to play Gene through this E. Uh, the reason being uh, this sets up the S for genes, so I am... Uh, somewhat likely to be able to bingo next turn if he doesn't manage to block. I still have this L to work with. But I could see he was really trying to start playing defense. I have both of these Ls, so if I draw bingo with an L, I will be bingoing next turn. Uh, and here, uh, after Gene, Jason plays Playa, so it gets rid of some junk, and I draw decently, and I have a lot of options here. I end up choosing Coaster for 81, which is not the highest scoring bingo. There are two options with an L, uh, locators and sectoral so those uh, score 83 both of which set up a very nice spot to play a bingo ending in an s um, but scoring slightly more than my than my choice and because i'm down 75 i'm actually behind so creating a dangerous lane is not necessarily a bad thing but i decided i'd play coaster keep things a little bit tighter uh, and I figure after Playa, Jason's unlikely to have high scoring tiles, so it's unlikely to be able to use this R very productively. The other option I might have done in a redo is coders here. It's even more uh, restrictive, but um, scoring 80 only. So lots of options. There are 280 pointers, 181 pointer, and 283 pointers. I decided to take 81. This is not the first point sacrifice that you will see in this game. Um, as next move, Jason plays Unica. Uh, so really not having very good letters here. And luckily for me, I drew a very nice rack that scores a ton. I'm able to play Monished through the IS for 56 across two double word scores. So taking a decent lead first of the game. Uh, and here... Uh, Jason scores very well with Dauber for 35, so keeping things closed and keeping things close. Uh, and uh, here, best I can do is the word that I say the most during these videos, and that is uh, for 30. And this play sort of puts Jason in a bind if he doesn't have an obvious way to score points. And indeed, with two blanks remaining, Jason makes the crazy play of out Vi for 26. And this sort of play, if you look at the six tiles he has, it's just better than pretty much anything he has. No matter what his, his uh, last tile is, it's just significantly better. And he's behind by 40, so he has to make something happen. So he makes this very, very daring play, opening a triple-triple with two blanks out, and I have no choice here with my draw, which was actually a really good draw for me, to just play re-enroll. And now look at this. We have this, 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 and to a lesser extent this. All of these big openings on this board and two blanks unseen to both of us. At least two blanks without buy. He obviously didn't have a blank with this. Uh, otherwise, he plays out vice or something better. Uh, so in this position, uh, both of us were obviously scared to death of a triple-triple. Jason plays footy, playing five more tiles, uh, which gives him a lot of chances to get a blank or even both blanks. He might even have one already with this play. And I instead draw the Q. So um, in this position... I'm up by 56 points, however, there's this humongous issue 
Uh, and the fact that I'm at 56 points means I can't both deal with this issue of this triple triple being open and what Jason just opened an even bigger spot than what was previously there. Uh, so I can't simultaneously deal with both and expect to be ahead if one of the threats is executed by Jason. So in this position, you might think I have no, no real choice but to play QI for 22 uh, or something like, uh, what else is there? There's quota as well, yeah, something I saw. Uh, playing a few extra tiles to try and draw a blank. Uh, but actually, there's also cots. So these are all the, basically, the options. And I can score with cots for 26, which is not an option I considered very much. But all of these options, I will be behind if Jason uh, hits one of the big threats. So what I decided to do is sacrifice 10 whole points to play QI for 11. And when I was playing this, I was like, this is an extremely paranoid play. But it's actually a very good play. Uh, and the reason for it is it blocks so much stuff through this E, but then I have one of the two remaining I's. So I can make an IES bingo, potentially, uh, or IER bingo. If I draw an R or two blanks, I can draw into toast here. So that was one of the things I saw. Uh, that I could draw. It's not a non-zero chance. It's not a great one, but it's possible. And I'm just blocking a whole lot of huge high-scoring plays uh, with the Z, with the X, with all these high-scoring tiles. And with these high-scoring tiles, despite there being two blanks out, the likelihood of a bingo is pretty low. I mean, it's pretty high because of the blanks, but because there's so many awkward tiles unseen, uh, the V, the two Gs, the K, W, X, B. Um, it's not actually that likely that a bingo is going to happen immediately. Uh, it might take a couple more turns of getting rid of the, the bad tiles for one of us to bingo. So I felt that after this play, just really, really stopping Jason from scoring. Um, and if I draw an E, I get odious. Uh, there's also some other draws I can, I can draw. Uh, like an N for station. There's there's a bunch of things I can hit, but sacrificing the 10 points was 100% just to block this E, or try and block it. Of course, he can still have a triple-triple. It's just way, way, way less likely. And I might be able to uh, go for one myself and make a targeted play next turn, if necessary, if I feel the need. So, very dubious play, but... The engine likes it, and I liked it, and I made the play. And Jason does not bingo, and he plays pawn, and we're getting closer to there being no tiles in the bag. Still two blanks out. I draw this G. Uh, Godius is not going to fit to the E. And I have some options here. This is a very, very, very complicated position. Uh, you're dealing with a lot of balancing of probabilities. Uh, because there's a V and X, a K and a Z and a G and a B remaining, again, it's not super, super, super likely a bingo will happen. It's definitely up there. But the fact that there are only four vowels, 10 consonants, and most of those consonants are very clunky, it's not actually a huge, huge threat. Um, so I took the opportunity here, being up 40 points, to score as much as I could and play a gist for 31. Gates is the same exact thing, same score. There's no difference between those two plays. And I wanted to block this huge, huge spot up top and potentially leave the possibility of blocking the B column next and the C column and really just try to prevent Jason from bingoing. Of note, Unica has no hooks. Uh, it's the plural of Unicum. And again, it's very difficult to play through this E. So I thought that I was giving myself the best chances here with the gist, but it's possible that I needed to be more aggressive here and worry about my own rack a bit more. And I have the option of either Toga or Tog, better yet. Tog being better because I have the last A. The A is really going to help me uh, bingo on this board. And the problem with this play for 19 points is if Jason bingos next turn, 
and I don't, I'm pretty much dead. But I'm maximizing my chances of drawing said bingo by leaving everything open despite threats of two blanks. And this makes the position even more complicated, um, allowing Jason to do a lot of possible things to uh, try and come back and, and eke out the win uh, if he doesn't have an immediate bingo. And even if he has an immediate bingo, if he only has one of the blanks, he's probably pretty worried that I have the other one, but he'll probably end up making a bingo anyway. So this play of Tog here, or even next to the E and the D, uh, is a very interesting option. It's complete other direction than what I was attempting to do. I was attempting to score as much as possible, maximize my chance of drawing a blank, and block, and threaten to block next turn as well. So I play a gist, and in this position I only have a partial rack. I don't remember exactly what Jason had. Uh, he did tell me after the game, but I knew he had these five letters. If you're looking at this and you're scared, yes, you should be. And Jason makes the brilliant play holding the last two possible hooks of Zerk for 17. And Zerk, even though it puts him down by 52 points, has a massive dual threat, threat number one. A play here, starting with M and ending in a blank S, is going to score upwards of 70 points, potentially even 80 points. Uh, and he's also getting rid of his two clunky tiles. He did not have the X at the time. Um, and yeah, what he's doing is he's threatening this and also he's threatening the bingo on the B call. And I cannot deal with both simultaneously and I, cannot, I can't necessarily outrun both either. Uh, so this puts me in an extremely, extremely tough situation. And I only had a couple of minutes on the clock uh, with this rack. Uh, again, I'm staring right into the barrel of two blanks. And I know that if Jason has the X, um, he can score 90 points in this spot. And I know that if he doesn't have the X, he's almost guaranteed to have, or pretty much guaranteed to have, a threat on the B column because I cannot assume that he would ever play Zerk with only one blank, because if I just play something with Zerks, I have too many points, and he won't be able to out outscore me with a bingo. So I have to assume he has both blanks here, and either he draws an X, in which case he's maybe not going to bingo, but he still might. Uh, there's stuff like re-expel, remixes, uh, there's just, there's a lot. And so I either have to assume he's drawn the X and not a bingo and try to block Zerks with something like id for nine, or uh, I have to try and, or assume that he has the X and play Vide and put myself up by a hundred points and hope that's enough if he has the X. Or my other option is to play down from the B column and use the V that I just drew as uh, as a wall to block Jason in, which is what I do. And with two seconds on my clock, I make the play of Divot. There's also the option of Bovid, but what I was worried about with Bovid is that even if I draw an outplay next turn, it won't score enough to outscore his highest scoring plays using Zerks. So if he plays something for 80 points, or 80 plus points, uh, and I have an outplay, uh, I don't think I'm going to win. So not just that, like 90 points. So if I play Bovid, he has the X, and he plays something like uh, Rexes or Mixes or something, uh, I basically have to hope to draw one of the E's, uh, and then I can go out next turn. If I draw RM, I can go out with Trem, uh, but it just becomes really, really complicated. So I'm going, I'm going up by 78. If he scores something like uh, 90, uh, I should be okay. But if he scores 100, uh, I won't be okay. And there are definitely plays that score upwards of, of that much. Um, so like XERUS, for example, 16, 18, 20, 35. That's 105 points. 
leaving Jason with um, potentially G E M E L, uh, putting him up by 20, um, almost 30 points, and my outplay is not going to score enough. So my thought process with playing Divot instead was if I draw an outplay like RE, for example, um, I can score enough on the A column to outrun. But I thought I was in like very, very bad shape here. I thought it was very unlikely that I would win this game. I basically had to assume that I drew the X and was able to play Ibex next turn or something of the like uh, to give myself the best chance of outscoring his play. So I played Divot, and this is Jason's rack, and he is down 75 in the end game, but still possible he has a winning play here because of how strong his rack is. And even if he doesn't have a winning play, if he has a play that only loses by less than 10 points, fewer than 10, then he can make that play extremely fast and just hope that I go over time. So of course, I'm not going out with BERX. You can see my remaining letters. So Jason needs to find the highest scoring sequence he can and either hope that it's enough or maybe it is enough or hope that I go over time. And once again, I had two seconds on my clock. So um, yeah, this is terrible. This is so frightening. But it looked like while Jason was calculating, I was ready to play one of two things um, based on what he did. It looked like that I was going to be okay as long as I made my play fast enough. Uh, but of course, calculating this sort of thing under so much pressure is brutal. So Jason makes the play I thought he would make, Glees, for 72. Oh, and I've already lost because I took more than two seconds to react to his play like you guys but of course in the game I would manage to make my play in one second I play Ibex and Jason goes out with his best play of MA for 22 and the game ends 400 for me 395 for Jason and boy did I escape this one because there was no like I didn't have much hope uh, Jason made a brilliant brilliant choice and playing Zerk, but I will want to show you guys something um, after I tally this up. So round nine, my record is seven and two plus 20. So again, like I'm winning, but I have absolutely zero point spread. So that's a lingering problem. Um, just stealing these games. Um, and if you remember correctly, I pretty much stole a game against Daryl Day. Uh, he had a better bingo that I think would have won him the game. I'm not actually sure about that. Um, yeah, he might have won if he played Servalas, but maybe not. Anyways, um, I stole the game, somewhat stole the game against France, Mike France last round, uh, because he missed two bingos. Um, and I stole the game against uh, Eric Goldstein as well. So yeah, a lot of these games have been uh, stolen. I feel like I'm just like getting extremely lucky to be winning them. I could very well be um, four and five in this position. So anyways, uh, if we go back, I'll show you guys the Quackle board here. Um, if we go back to this play of Zerk, you notice Jason did have an M. And after the game, he was like, oh man, I should have played Merc. Merc for only 8 or 10 points rather than Zerk uh, for 17. Now why? Why would that be any better? Well, it's just very, very clever math. Um, although he's scoring 7 fewer points, if he manages to use this double letter score next turn, so if you imagine me playing Divot, and let's say he doesn't have the X, because if he has the X, scoring a million points. Let's say he has this rack. Um, he has this word, zeals, for 96 points. And this actually, I think, won't win. Oh, it will win. Okay, this would have won him the game. Um, 
in the same iteration if he had played Merc, because uh, he plays Zeals for 96. Uh, I play Ibex, that's the best that I have, I think. Uh, and he plays Keg, but actually, what if I play Kex? Um, you still win? Oh my god, this is the first time I'm looking at this. So, this would have ended in a tie uh, if the same thing had occurred. Uh, but maybe I would have played Bovid instead. And if I played Bovid, and he had the same rack. Uh, go here, here. I would win easily. Yeah, because I don't have the remaining B on my rack. Wow. Uh, so, yeah, crazy stuff. But all that to be said, the play of Merc is especially concerning because if Jason does have the X, uh, he will be scoring 117 points for Zaxxas. 117. So there is pretty much no way I can win after that, even if I have an outplay. Uh, actually, let's look at it. If I play Divot and I draw Bree. Yeah, Jason still wins. So the best I can do is lose by four uh, if he draws the X. So there's a 50% chance he would draw the X. And yeah, the reason Merc is a better play is just because of math. Because he's able to get a multiplier for the Z rather than not get one. It's just It just works out better mathematically for him. So Merc would have been a crazy play. The problem with Merc is that I might not have blocked uh, because if there's a z and an x unseen i could have won the game just by potentially playing vide so if the same thing happens here uh, jason will be up by 21 and he might not be able to go out uh, with his two tiles so i might be able to win in some scenarios in this one i do win, i do win because he doesn't have an outplay and if he tries uh to delay um he tries to delay by playing gel or leg, uh, I can just block. So if I play something like OE, uh, sorry, I can't play KO, I'm playing too much. I can literally just play this. And he goes out with Zaxxas and not come in anywhere close to winning. So he can't delay. Um, but of course, if he has both of the E's, he'll be able to go out next turn and win the game pretty easily after the play of Vide. So I could consider instead just blocking again with something like id uh, or again something like ute uh, but i think i want to block a bit more with id and the best he can do here is what he plays axe for 50 uh, that should not be enough let's see let's run the end game solver to see if he has anything uh, but i'm pretty sure he doesn't yeah so once i block um, if he doesn't draw into an out bingo, which he can draw into, by the way. If he draws this rack, for example, he gets reglaze or elegize and wins by a ton. Um, but 50% chance he draws the X, and also he doesn't always bingo. So, um, extremely complicated position uh, that we had. Let me get rid of the quackle board. But yeah, that was just a little bit of uh, insight into what you have to be thinking about on the play of. The Cirque, you have to be looking super far into advance, in advance, and uh, I definitely got extremely lucky to be able to uh, uh, stop stop Jason from scoring as much as possible. You know, if I did have the X and he played something like Merc, I would have some really good options uh, down the B column, like Vexil, tripling the X, or Voxel, V-O-X-E-L, possibly. Um, so it's just, it's a very complicated position. There isn't a play here for Jason that wins 100% of the time. Uh, but he might have done a better job if he played Merc instead. But that could have led me to make another decision and not block. So he definitely regretted playing Merc, but it's possible that Zerk was fine. Because it makes, like I said, two threats. Or the threat of a bingo is much, much higher after Zerk than after Merc. So, all that being said, uh, I was very, very fortunate to be able to come away with the win here. Um, and so yeah, continue, continue to only have two losses after nine games. So, um, let me show the board. 
Thanks for watching, everybody. I will see you guys. And look at these, look at these timestamps. Oh my god. 01 and 15. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.